I offer my most humble pranams at Bhagwan's lotus feet. Dear Swami, respected elders, dear brothers and sisters, it is a very beautiful and wonderful day today because it is a day when all of us have chosen to set aside time for God. Any day we decide to set aside time for God becomes a special day becomes a holy day most of the sundays are holidays for us since we have set aside time for god this also becomes a holy day along with a holiday every time when i am introduced it is really a very very humbling experience and i use this analogy every time possible more than for reminding others to remind my own self the analogy goes like this you know after the uh, war in lanka rama returns and he is coronated as the emperor of ayodhya and for the coronation ceremony all the vanaras all the bears all the squirrels everyone who you know accompanied who were part of rama's mission also accompany him so to ayodhya they want to see this grand coronation and so we have that painting painted by many artists where there is rama sita lakshmana hanuman and then the monkeys the bears all are there in the background a magnificent painting and at one home where i went i saw that they worship this painting they do they offer flowers and they even do aarti to this painting that is when this thought struck me that you know when the aarti is being done to that painting just imagine one monkey in that painting thinking they are doing aarti to me you know i am awesome i am how foolish it would be because if that same monkey were to come out of the painting and come down we will throw stones and chase it away with a stick that is what i feel all of us who have been blessed to get associated with swami's mission are monkey squirrels and bears who are worshiped and praised because at some point in time we stood in the same painting in the same frame of the with the lord otherwise we are just mere monkeys squirrels and bears so offering my most humble gratitude to swami for everything in life that he has conferred i would like to do some arpan at least in this samarpan that has been my aim when i was asked what you know i i asked i mean what should i what should i speak during samarpan they said you can start with how you came to swami now how i came to swami has been so many times narrated by myself and it has also been written in that book and there were a few people whom i know who called me and said hey don't tell anything that is there in your books huh because we have already read them so i thought that instead of narrating how i came to swami i will narrate a few instances of how swami came to me i also feel this is more relevant today because because in our own limitations as mere mortals we feel that the time is gone when we could go to swami when we could just book a ticket and go to wherever either bangalore or dharmavaram or puttaparthi and go there sit for darshan and go to swami because many of us each one of us in our own way would have experienced that immense void in our heart immense sorrow in our heart when we go there and for the first time when instead of that loving orange form we see that big marble structure it hits us we shed tears thinking of it we shed tears so in a human sense we feel that are those days are gone wo din gaye jab when we could go to swami now only swami has to come to us that's why i thought it will be more relevant to speak of occasions when swami has come to me and and these are not just occasions when swami was present in the physical form because swami's physical form is just one of the ways in which swami comes to us there are a million ways in which swami can come to us and i would like to share a few incidents and also possibly what i have learned as possible ways in which we can make swami come to us before i begin you know let me say that it is never late to come to swami you know i remember when i joined school i wanted to 
be part of Swami's educational institutions because, yeah, I wanted to go closer to God, I wanted to go close to Swami. When I went there, they said, hey, you came a little late, you know. Huh, why? Because till recently, on your birthday, you could go up to Swami's interview room door and demand that Swami bless you. Now you have to sit and wait. Whenever Swami wants, He'll bless you. So, thoda late aagya re. You missed it. So I felt, yeah, maybe why Swami? Why didn't you call me five years earlier? You know, I met somebody five years senior to me. I told him, you are very lucky. You know, you came to Swami at the right time. He said, no, yaar, I came late. What happened? You know, five years before I came, people could garland Swami on their birthdays. They would get blessed. I came late. So I went to the era where people could garland Swami when He came. They also felt they came late because, because something else. You go back in time, back in time, everybody says, yeah, I came, but you know, Array, this was the time when it was late. And then you go ahead, you know, there came a time when I remember telling some of my juniors, you came late, Swami used to walk, you know, Swami used to walk and give darshan now. There came a time when people said, hey, Swami used to come and give darshan. And now there's a time when people say Swami was there. Now you're late. Let me tell you, nobody is satisfied with God because we can never be satisfied with God. This is one addiction possibly that is worth cult cultivating and never we, it is good never to get satiated with it. So if you go and ask people across ages, across sections, everybody feels, have you got any? No, we could have got some more here. Just, it's never enough. So there is no need of thinking that we are late. Never, never are we late. Because if we think we are late, we are making the mistake of assuming that we have chosen when we want to come to Swami. It's not like that. It is Swami who decides when we have to come to Him. And that, however funny, however wrong, however odd it may seem in the worldly sense, is the perfect time. It is neither early nor late. That is the time. And when that time comes, we come. So there's no need to feel that we are late, we missed out. No. Because we have all come when Swami has decided that we have to come and it is the best possible time. Now coming back to how Swami comes to us. You know, when I say Swami comes to us, the most practical way is, yeah, I can, I'm able to communicate with Swami, listen to what He's saying, understand what I should do based on what He feels. So I'll start with the era when the physical form was there. People think that, you know, when Swami was there, it was so easy, you know, you could go ask Swami directly. There could, cannot be a greater mistake than assuming this. Because for almost six years as a student, I never got a chance to ask Swami anything. I never got a chance, you know, I would... And then I would see devotees coming twice a year, thrice a year. And in those three visits they make in the year, one visit they get an interview. And I think they come three times a year for three days, nine days in a year. In that they get an interview in one day. I'm sitting here 365 days in a year and Swami, you have not spoken to me only? One year, two years, three years, four years. And the worst situation comes in the vacation. You come home and you're like a hero, Swami student. Hey, share some experience with Swami. What else share? I don't have. You've got three interviews, I've got nothing. Hey, great. You boys know very lucky. No, I used to tell you, just shut up. What do you mean I'm lucky? You come whenever you want and you get off. I'm sitting there three years, nothing I've got. So even if you're a student there, Swami has to decide. There have been students who on the first day of, from the first day of joining, on the first day of joining, they get an interview. For every such student who has got an interview on the first day of joining, there are at least 200 other students who have not got an interview even on the last day of leaving. It's been like that. That is how it has been. So, so it is not as if those were wonderful times, you know. Whenever you problem, you can go to Swami. <laughs> it's not like that. And in that sense, times have not changed now because even now, when Swami decides to come to us, He will come. Just like in those days when Swami used to come to us, He would come. And I'm not st stating this just based on my experience. One of my seniors, when Swami used to come for darshan in the car, you know, he directly told Swami. He said, Swami, Swami, those golden days are gone. Swami said, what golden days are gone? He said, Swami, when, you know, when we could 
approach you when you were approachable when we could come to you now swami you are so far we are not getting proximity swami told him nobody ever had proximity proximity had always been given and even now to those who ha- have to be given it is continued to be given so there's no change it's not as if there was a time when everybody you know you just go to the time in the 60s and 70s there are devotees who have come to swami in 60s and 70s they will say yes swami was there every day we were first line every day they were second line every day we could speak to swami okay what all swami said you tell nothing they don't remember because it was general thing in the sense it's always like a trade off in a time when swami was abundantly available nobody caught and stored you know and recorded it's always like a trade off and therefore i feel more than what we have physically received from swami what matters is how much we long to receive from swami because receiving things from swami is no guarantee of bringing about any change in us but when we pine to receive from swami believe me whether we receive from swami or not something happens within just the act of pining for him pining to receive him is enough everything is obtained you now i'm i'm reminded of a scene from the movie annamaya annamaya has sung krutis hearing those krutis people got oneness with god but guess what annamaya didn't get and annamaya kept struggling telling what is this oh lord why don't i get you i want you i want you all his life has been pining and pining and pining and people who listen to his krutis once they get off so who is luckier annamaya or the people who listen to the krutis of annamaya but you know annamaya's great good fortune finally he goes to the lord and says lord release me it's beautifully captured in the telugu movie he says lord release me I'm, i have had enough the lord comes in this annamaya if i if i make you merge into me who will sing for me annamaya the difference you know the difference between you annamaya and others is others need me but annamaya i need you please don't merge into me so you see annamaya apparently didn't get anything but he got everything he you know we get addicted to the lord the lord got addicted to annamaya so so now when i narrate an incident from the time when swami was physically available you will also realize that it was not as if you decide and you get swami swami has to decide this was in the year 2009 so in 2009 one of my sai brothers who is currently my neighbor amay desh pande i guess he was here last week last month for the summer pand he came to me and he said arvind this summer i am going to singapore to my sister's home for vacation would you like to come along with me you can stay there you know i had never been outside india so far so very tempting feels awesome vacation time he said uh, don't think you're just going to have fun and all that because yeah we'll go to the center there they love to listen to swami student speak we can yeah when i whenever i go there every time i'm pulled there to talk now it'll be good we can have a like a batting partnership we can rotate strike and it felt very good very awesome and you know it also you know satisfied my conscience i'm not going there to have fun yeah fun is there but you know i'm going to spread some his message but then the thought came oh, come on now i don't think i'll be able, in my mind and i'm thinking i don't think i'll be able to afford a ticket and buy all that and so leave it off that's what i was thinking maybe my face was transparent because the next thing he told me was you don't worry i have already actually booked the tickets also it's all there you just tell yes uh, it's not a big deal no problem you know you just come and this was very tempting you know very very tempting but uh, i was really in a state of confusion because i didn't want to tell yes but i also didn't want to tell no again he said you know you ask swami you ask swami and you tell me what it is anyway ticket is ready you just have to tell yes or no so i said yeah yeah i'll ask swami and now i decided yeah i'll ask swami but i was having a fear when swami comes for darshan i didn't want to get up and ask swami i'm being invited to singapore can i go i didn't want to ask because because you know having heard so many of swami's discourses i was scared you know like 
Swami used, Swami bashes up those who leave the motherland and go to some other country. Swami says, people finish education here and I, instead of serving society, they leave and run off to other countries, wash dishes there. You know, uh, wash dishes at your own home for your mother. Your mother will be grateful. She will have tears of joy. That blessings will stand you in good stead. You know, like this Swami says, quotes Ramayana. You know, Lakshmana apparently came to Rama and he said, after Ravana was dead, Hey, Rama, you know what? They kicked you out of Ayodhya. It's awesome here in Lanka, you know. So everything is gold. Just become rule here only, you know. Why you go again, you know? Maybe Lakshmana was dreading the long back walk back home. He didn't know that Pushpaka Vimana facilities will be given. I think so. But that is when Rama said, Janani Janma Bhumishcha Saragadapi Gariyasi. Oh, Lakshmana, even if this is golden, I can't. Because my mother and motherland are greater than heaven. Just because some lady is prettier, I can't say that is my mother. In the same way, just because some other country looks more golden, I can't say this is my motherland, I have to go back. So all this was there and a voice within me was saying, if you want to speak about Swami, why do you want to go abroad and speak? Go speak in India as if there aren't enough places in India. You know, in cartoons they often show you that when you are in a dilemma, a devil comes and an angel comes and you know, they hold a dialogue and a devil will tell, eh, and an angel will tell very calmly. But in reality, that does not happen, you know. Because if that happens, you can just say, I won't listen to the devil, I'll listen to the angel. In reality, what happens is two beings pop up. You don't know which is the devil, which is the angel. That is the problem. And both seem to give very logical things. Now, who is the devil, who is the angel, you don't know. Both give different things, opinions. So one voice is telling me, Swami says, why do you want to leave the country and go and all that? If you want to speak about Swami, isn't there a thirst for Swami stories in India? Speak in India. Then the other voice says, ah, but in India, who called you to come and speak? Nobody called, no? From Singapore, they're calling you, no? So you go there. I don't know, tell me which is devil, which is angel. Tough, no? So I didn't know what to do. I thought I'll ask Swami, but as I said, I didn't have the... I didn't know, I just felt the minute I tell Swami, foreign country, somebody is sponsoring. I thought Swami will just get angry. So I wrote a letter. Tommy, I wish to take a vacation for a week and go to a far place. That's enough. That's enough. Swami knows everything. No, Swami knows. Convenient philosophy, you know. When it's convenient for us, we, Swami knows everything. I know I did a stupid mistake, but why to tell Swami? Swami knows everything. But I want to go and tell. You know, if anything good is there, Swami, yeah, Swami, my son did it. Swami, this happened. I did it. That I want to tell Swami. In fact, Swami would say that our need for recognition is so much. He would narrate the story of how in a government function, the speaker was speaking and the fan was not put on. So he's feeling hot and he said, why don't you put on the fan? The reason the fan was not put on was it was donated by some fellow and that fellow's name was written. And if the fan is running, nobody can see it. <laughs> so Swami said, let the fan not be switched on. So let them, that is, that is our need for portraying ourselves. But when it comes to a mistake, we do, hey, see, why to tell? Swami knows everything. See, Swami knows, no? When we have to take action to correct something, see, the Lord knows everything. You know, this bombing going on in Iraq, in Syria, what are you doing? What we can do? Swami knows everything. Your daughter failed the exam. Oh, God, study well. Don't, don't worry. If your daughter tells you, don't worry, Dad, don't worry, Mom. Swami knows everything. Huh? You just shut up and study, okay? All this nonsense you don't give me. Because we feel, God, the whole world you are wise enough to take care of, but my life, no, you listen to me. Okay. Please, Swami, let this happen. Bangaru, don't you trust my wisdom? I'm taking care of the world. No, 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 Swami, see, world and all, you do a good job, but my life, no? Yeah, this appointment I need to get, Swami, you don't understand all this, you know, just listen to me. We feel like that. We feel that when it comes to taking care of the universe and the world, the Lord is perfect, but my life, yeah, Lord, you know, listen to me. So I was feeling this kind of thing, yeah, Swami... Actually, I need to go to Singapore, but how do I tell you? So this much is enough, you know it anyway. If I, if, this is just symbolic Swami, I am telling that for eight days I am going to a faraway place. You know it is Singapore, you know it that everything is being taken care of, you know everything. This was my thought. I wrote that letter, but I didn't offer it to Swami. Why? Because I thought, let's wait for a good mood, you know. When Swami is in some good mood, give the letter. All these, all these, uh, the way we, you know, uh, I think it was R.K. Narayanan, 
who wrote this he said that if when a buffalo was asked how is god the buffalo described god as a magnificent buffalo with the biggest horns and the longest tail that is our problem with our concept of god we have a concept of ourselves we add 10% of to, to that and think that is god that's what so that is why you know uh, one of the great telugu saint sang enta maatramunu evariki talachina anta maatrame neevu how much ever whoso ever's mind is that much you are somewhere with a loose cheap mind god will appear cheap for that person if somebody has a broad mind god will appear expansive and magnificent to that person if you have a buffalo mind god will appear like a buffalo that's how it is so therefore since i had a human mind i was also looking like you know like how if you want to take a leave from your boss you'll wait for the boss to be in a good mood you'll just hope that that day he has not fought with his wife or he has not had some trouble in his child school if he's in good mood then your leave is granted other it's not granted so too i was waiting for such a day when swami is in a good mood and that day came somewhere in april when the devotees from the state of odisha put up a program swami was so moved he was so happy he was in a blessing mood he was giving everybody akshata blessings taking letters everything and i was shooting on the video camera so as swami was going by i put on my most devoted face now i was introduced as a great actor that's what i had done you know i just put on a very devoted and offered my singapore letter and swami took it and that's ah, done yes swami is agreed now permission granted that's what i thought but you know there's one thing in us called the conscience it won't allow you to rest in peace i called up and told amai that you know i swami took my letter it's blessed he was very happy yes everybody i told my parents he swami has permitted okay great everybody is fine i am not fine because how much ever i may fool anybody with my acting i can't fool myself i know that i have tried to brush some things under the carpet hide something and not told swami the full thing so in my heart i am not convinced that swami has actually permitted me i didn't do anything about it days passed my flight was scheduled for the 15th of may it was the 13th of may and that time i felt no you know what i have done is not right i have to i have to i have to get a better permission you know actual permission because because i hid some things from swami so again i started writing another letter now even in this letter the minute the word singapore came i started shivering i thought oh god you know swami is going to blast me and swami said what you going going abroad huh? so i cut out the word singapore so it's some far away place with beaches swami means i a little more. guess the place kind of game i am playing to swami because i don't want to you know i'm just hoping you know like, like a fool i'm hoping that if i write far away place with beaches maybe he'll think it's kerala you know whatever so i wrote that letter and that day during darshan on the 13th as swami was coming some boy offered two wedding cards to swami and swami received those two cards and when he came near me i offered this letter he looked at me through one of the cards to me and he i didn't know what it meant and he just moved on he didn't take my letter and he gave me a wedding card so i was wondering what is this you know i thought possibly i'll go back and ruminate over it open maybe there'll be a letter there maybe something some what but i didn't get a chance to do any of that because just as swami went in and the music stopped that boy who had given that no he came to me and said brother sorry that is actually mine swami gave you by mistake give me back then i wanted to tell him that you know like swami doesn't make mistakes and all and he gave it to me i wanted to tell that but he said swami has blessed two cards i gave one he took one he has blessed and given you know that bride and groom will be so happy so, okay yaar fine you know for the joy of that bride and groom i sacrificed i gave him the card you taken okay but my problem still remain now what is the status of the singapore trip my visa has come but size visa it has not it come and so on the 14th i've just got 24 hours now to get my visa clearance and i wrote another letter not another, i i'm sorry i didn't write another letter i had the same letter from the previous day i was sitting and hoping that swami you just take this letter swami please take this letter as a sign that you are blessing me that day as swami came for darshan again i was in the first row swami is coming close and when he's about a meter away he looks towards me and he smiles and i felt wow you know this is good this is a good omen a smile next if he takes the letter it's done swami decides to do a bonus he searches on his lap and pulls out a vibhuti packet 
and he throws look at that now i'll slow down and go frame by frame and as swami throws the vibhuti packet i am waiting for it eagerly the vibhuti packet is flying towards me like this in mid air one hand comes like this and takes that vibhuti packet <laughs> and it's gone my neighbor my neighbor did his mid air snatch supposed to be my catch and i was like shocked and you know i want to look at swami so that he can tell the day hey, not your give to him or something like swami but by then swami turned to the other side where where vedana and sir was chanting the vedas and just didn't turn this side only again you know in student parlance we call it bal sai darshan jab sai ka sirf bal dikhai deta hai that you know <laughs> he he turns around and just and he went off i thought you know it's okay once darshan music is over i'll tell this brother that sairam brother you don't know what i'm going through that's for me so i was just waiting once i saw interview room door closed darshan is over i turned to him and this brother is having tears in his eyes and he's clutching that vibhuti packet like that i called him sairam brother he said see swami's grace you know yesterday a match matrimonial match came for me i was praying to swami and now swami has given this are yaar one more marriage is <laughs> ruining my <laughs> my trip over here yesterday one marriage got now this fellow also his marriage now i didn't feel like you know ruining marriages i said okay fine you keep the vibhuti packet but what about me now then i went back i went back to my room now i have got less than 24 hours and next day if i have to catch the flight i have to leave i have to leave early by 4:30 i have to leave puttaparthi and those days there was no guarantee that by 4:30 swami will come for darshan so what do i do then i thought okay yaar let let me pray swami at least come in my dream you know come in my dream because swami has clearly said swapna darshan is sai darshan he says i'll come in your dreams i will talk to you that is why i wonder why people go to somebody else and seek advice you know he is very close to swami he may know an answer why because of our habit in temples going and giving dakshina to pujari and thinking that will become dear to the lord no need we think that the pujari is needed to carry our message to the lord because i always say that that mode you know all of us dream because all of us sleep that mode is available why don't we pine why don't we pine and ask swami you come and tell me in my dream anyway so coming back so i was hoping that swami you tell me in my dream i want you to come and tell me in my dream um like a hindi serial i'll just pause here because i want to tell you that dream experiences are not to be thought as our imagination okay uh, i'm reminded of this and i'm as i said i'm sorry i'm taking this detour because it is relevant to mumbai and it is relevant to dreams so i'll narrate this i'll pause i'll come back to the singapore story this happened in 1998 in the october of 1998 i had a dream i know it because i've written it down in my diary everything that has happened related to swami i have written it down in diary i have got 14 diaries because when i joined the school i just felt that the apostles of jesus were not wise enough because they didn't maintain their personal diaries you know if at all they maintained how great it would be so i felt this one today it will seem like my diary but 100 years from now this will be like quoted and all like how you say thomas how you say like, like that my diaries will be quoted that's what i felt and now i feel now it's going to come true it's going to happen because 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 it's not my diary it is it is about swami no that is the thing anything associated with god becomes eternal anything associated with the world is not eternal hey, you know i'm another beautiful episode there is uh, dr t ravi kumar he is from the brindavan campus he is the warden currently there was a time when he was doing his doctorate and swami asked him in the interview room in front of a, a devotee why did you come to puttaparthi and sir told swami swami i came for darshan swami said why do you want darshan he said because swami it gives me bliss swami said it gives you happiness or it gives you bliss swami bliss what is the difference between happiness and bliss how do you say it is bliss not happiness and ravi kumar sir says that i don't know what inspired this answer but it has to be swami only but the answer he gave swami is so beautiful because swami felt so happy and i felt so happy listening to that answer he told swami 
Swami, I am saying it is bliss because, see Swami, when you are very, very, very hungry, and at that time, if somebody gives you a gulab jamun, you will feel happy. That is happiness. But when you are pining for Swami, and you get his darshan, that is bliss. Because Swami, 10 years from now, when I am not able to see you, Swami, and I am pining to see you, if I close my eyes and recollect having seen you 10 years before, I will get the same joy. But that won't happen with Rasgulla Swami or Gulab Jamun. 10 years later when I am very hungry, I can't think of a Gulab Jamun and say, I am full. It will make me more miserable in fact. And look at this, if all of you are hungry and I come and tell you, Sairam dear brothers and sisters, don't worry. Gulab Jamun, Mysore Park, I ate, I am full. You will throw slippers at me. But when you are pining for Swami, I will come and tell dear brothers and sisters, listen, Swami did this, Swami did this, and you all listen, smile and clap. Things with God bring bliss, which is permanent. Things of the world bring only happiness, which is temporary. So yes, coming back to yeah, the dreams of Swami. So that is why, you know, that is why I say that those diaries are immortal because they contain God. God is permanent. So I had this dream in which Swami had come to my hostel and he had all luggage packed and ready. And I come to Swami and I ask, Swami, where are you going? Swami says, I'm going to Bombay. I said, Swami, come near our house, Swami, National Park is there. I was part of the Borivili Samiti then. So I told Swami, uh, come to our place, National Park is there. Swami said, I'm coming to National Park. I said, Swami, just wait then, I'll get my camera and come. Swami says, fast, because if you're late, I have to leave. And then I go to my room, my camera is not found, I'm searching. So basically at the end of it, I find my camera and come, Swami has left. That was the end of the dream. October 20th, 1998. I just wrote it down and forgot about it also. Totally forgot about this dream also. Now let's move to March 16th, 1999. Six months later. Suddenly in the month of March, a visit to Mumbai got planned. And Swami was in Mumbai on the 16th, 17th and 18th, I think. Or 15th, 16th and 17th of March. And on 16th of March, there was a program in uh, Goregaon. And after that program, Swami said that he would visit a devotee's home, whom he had promised that he would visit. Now a strange thing happens because the exact location of the devotee's home, nobody in the in Swami's party knew the exact route. In fact, that devotee's son was with Swami serving him. He himself, I think he has only not come to his home, so he didn't know where his home is. In the pilot car, my father got the opportunity because, guess what, this devotee's home was on the other side of National Park and our home was on this side of National Park. So my father said he knows, so he was put in the pilot car and entire Swami's convoy went there. Now in the meanwhile, what has happened, is the Samiti there had adopted a slum called Kajupada and these children, they were unable to come to Dharmakshetra because, you know, Dharmakshetra is a very small place actually <laughs> to hold all the devotees. So they thought that when Swami is passing by, they can have a darshan. They can pray that Swami rolls down his glass and, you know, waves at them or something like that. And guess what? Again, I know this because my mother was one among the people there coordinating that. The place chosen for these children to assemble was the entrance of the Sanjay Gandhi National Park in Borivili. And they're all waiting there. Swami goes to the devotee's house and the devotee says that in the house, Swami asks, I'm hearing some bhajans, where are they coming from? There was no tape recorder playing at home, so he was wondering what Swami is saying. I'm assuming that Swami was referring to the bhajans going on about a kilometer away at the National Park entrance. And when Swami came there, it was about 9 o'clock in the night, 8.30 or 9 at night. And one of the devotees of the Samiti went up to Swami's car and said, Swami, please bless. Swami's hand didn't go to the lever which lowers the glass. It went to the lever which opens the door. And the devotee beside Swami said, Swami, this is not a scheduled stop. Swami said, but I want to go, can I? <laughs> yes, Swami. Swami got down, walked in there. He was there for 10 minutes. It was a absolute stunner for everyone present there. My parents remember this moment very fondly. Such a beautiful thing and they were all thrilled. 
thrilled to receive Swami's darshan there. Swami asked, where is the aarti? This, nobody thought that Swami is going to get down for the aarti and all that. Okay, they hurriedly brought some aarti. Bring coconuts, wave coconuts. Somebody started waving rose also because they thought, okay. There, nothing was planned, right? So they're seeing everything is being waved. So we'll wave rose, every hand. Everyone got a beautiful chance. Swami spent 10-15 minutes there and went back. Came back to Dharmakshetra after that. There was a cultural program in Dharmakshetra after that, in the night. That's another story. But then, that vacation when I went home, I had taken my diary home and my mother, father and parents are reading through the diary and they say, Hey, why you didn't tell this? You know, Swami had actually come. I had forgotten the dream only. Then I went back and I said, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, correct. Six months before he had told that. You know, you'll never take it seriously. You know, if Swami comes in a dream and tells, I'll go to moon with you. Okay. Oh, okay. Swami told something. If you don't write down, you won't even remember. That's why I feel whenever anything associated to Swami, please write it down. Don't trust your memory to remember it. Because memory even distorts it, changes it over time. Write it down. I had totally forgotten about it. So, I, see, therefore, I just wanted to state this to show that when Swami comes, whether in flesh and blood or in your dream, it is real. It is real. It is real. But of course, Swami has also given a warning regarding this. He said, if I want to communicate, I'll come and tell you in your dream. If I come to you and tell, Swami told me in my dream that my son should marry your daughter, just watch out. No, let Swami come and tell me in my dream that uh, my daughter should marry your son. Then I will. Because, because in the physical also, Swami used to always confirm, you know. There has been an occasion when Swami told me, go and tell the Vice Chancellor like this. And when I went, I, that's another story, but when I went to tell the Vice Chancellor, the Vice Chancellor nods and says, yeah, yeah, Swami said you will be coming to me. I think, Swami, you went and why, <laughs> you know. Swami is going to Vice Chancellor and telling that fellow will come and tell you something. Why don't you directly tell what you want to tell? But that is Swami's way. Even when he was physically there, he did not give an, in, he never did a half loop. If I tell you to tell something, I'll tell that person also to tell that. I say this because let us try to directly connect to God. Let us directly get his dreams. Let me not go and ask somebody, Arvind, you're getting so many dreams, no? Next time in your dream, ask, no, my mother is having fever. Ask, no, Swami. Why? You ask. Do you feel you're an inferior species? That Swami won't come to you. Or do you feel that your skull is so impenetrable that he can't enter yours? No. Swami can. Just that we want the shortcut. Every time we want shortcut. Easiest way. Cheapest and best method, what it is you tell. So anyway, so coming back to this, so therefore, that night I was hoping that I'll get a dream, which will clarify whether I can go to Singapore or not. But that didn't happen. He didn't come. And so dawned the 15th of May. I don't know what's my position. And as I was having bath, and I was going on thinking, Swami, why is this simple thing becoming such a big Headache and a pro problem, Swami, from two months, you know, from two months I'm not getting a solution. Whenever a problem comes to us in life, it's actually a messenger from God, carrying a message. The faster we get the message, the better, because then the messenger will go. But till you get the message, till we get the message, the messenger will stand there and keep repeating again and again and again and again and again, till we get the message. That's why you see, we all seem to have a similar kind of bad luck. You know, when it comes to anger, I don't know how, how much ever I try, I keep getting angry. I keep getting angry, yeah, because some message is not learned there. That's why anger is a messenger who will come and stay. I'm saying this from personal experience. Because my personal messenger, anger, <laughs> has been staying with me from 30 years now, trying to chase him away, learn the message. So every problem that comes in our life is actually a messenger from God giving some message. Instead of fighting the messenger, because in the olden times also, you know, the Mughals and Marathas are fighting. The Mughal messenger comes to the Maratha court, they won't kill the messenger. A messenger is simply conveying something. He's got nothing to do, don't kill him. That was not considered dharma. Don't kill the messenger. That's what we try to do in our life. We try to kill and annihilate the messenger. Think the messenger is the culprit. No, I'm just carrying a message. Once you receive the message, I'll go off on my own. I've come on a horse, I'll go off. I won't stay here. This is what I've learned and therefore I was thinking, Swami, if a simple thing I've not been able to convey to you, you know, forget, forget not being able to convey to you physically. Dream, Swami, you could have come. 
you can make me feel sleepy drowse now and give me a dream you can do that now you're not doing because because some message is there in this that is when i began to think of what is that message and then it struck me the answer lay in me not writing that word singapore why was i not writing that word singapore because i had a fear that swami may not permit me to go there in the second chapter of the bhagavad gita you know lord krishna says i think it's the 62nd uh, shloka dhyayate vishayan pumsaha he says that by thinking of sense objects you develop attachment towards the sense objects and then you de- develop desire towards the sense object and that is the beginning of ruin once you get desire because if your desire gets delayed you get frustrated if your desire doesn't get fulfilled you get angry if your desire gets fulfilled you get another desire in its place and again the cycle follows so it's sure shot leading to ruin till you get angry or frustrated you will keep getting desires it krishna goes on to say you lose intellect you lose discrimination finally you become totally destroyed and i realized that since i had the desire that i must go to singapore at any cost even if swami doesn't like it i want to go that gave birth to fear because there is a fear of rejection if i didn't care whether i'm going or not i would have simply told swami i'm going to singapore what what do you say don't go okay swami but i was not ready for that i don't want swami to say no that is why i'm having fear one of the root causes for fear is a worldly desire when i have a worldly desire there is bound to be fear there is bound to be frustration or anger one of the three 100% without doubt i said what a fool i have been i tore that letter i wrote another letter swami i have been invited to come to singapore 8 days swami my tickets everything has been paid for i seek your blessings to go that's it brass tax direct over because how foolish are we to think that we are fooling god we are hiding from god in a discourse you know swami was saying do you go to your father and say oh father the one who works for the multinational corporation the one who earns 1 lakh the one who wears a handsome suit please get me a bike do you do that you just go and tell dad get me a bike right then why do you say hey anath anatha karuna sindho dinam I mean you're buttering him you know you think he's a fool come to the point so i would say come to the point so in the same way yeah why what was i thinking i just just came to the point in that letter but i felt swami you know it's been little too late because now how do i give this to you also i can't give it to you because because evening i don't know if if darshan gets delayed then my flight is gone if darshan doesn't get delayed then i don't know means still i won't be able to make it in time now this was my thought suddenly one of my colleagues comes to the room and he says it looks like swami is coming for morning darshan wow suddenly you know the minute you learn the message it as if the messenger doesn't go back on a horse he flies in a rocket wo swami is coming for morning darshan great i just ran with the letter i went and sat in the portico because nobody was there nobody expected swami to come in the morning and swami you know after the lady side took a cut and came off to the portico didn't even go to the gent side came straight to the portico started moving wow he came near me and i gave the letter and i said swami you know i was somewhere near the bhajan hall entrance i said swami i am going to singapore swami opened the letter started reading i was kneeling down beside him swami said singapore yes swami eight days yes swami then he looks and he says asks do you have to go you know i had learned my lesson i said no swami that's why i'm asking you should i go or should i not go swami if you tell go i'll go otherwise i'll sit here swami no no you go <laughs> i said swami vibhuti swami you know that's like sealing the deal yahan sign karo swami sign here like that swami vibhuti swami said i'll give 
Now, usually there used, there used to be two boys walking beside Swami, alert to every of Swami's moves. So whenever Swami tells Prasadam Deta hai, they run into the entry room and get a basket of vibhuti packets. So Swami can take and give. So now Swami said he'll give and I looked and these two are standing there only. Like Jaya Vijay are not moving only. <laughs> so I pulled up, tugged at the pant of one fellow and said, get vibhuti. <laughs> so he was shocked. He was shocked at the audacity of some fellow telling him to get vibhuti. Only Swami can tell him that. <laughs> then I said, no, no, you ask, you ask. Swami looked at me, I said, Swami, vibhuti. So I said, yeah, yeah, go, go, get, go get vibhuti. <laughs> ah, get, you know, get, he was told. Swami gave me three vibhuti packets and, you know, that's how it happened. That is when I realized one of the main things to do to make God come to us is to cut away these desires for the world. Very often, our heart, mind and soul is filled with so much of the world, God does not come because he doesn't have place to come there. Where will I come? I remember, you know, when I was a kid, I love dosas, masal dosas. And even now I love it. So when I was a kid, I was crazy behind it. So I heard that there's a hotel where masal dosas are the best in the world, you know, best in the universe. Because if it is best in the world, it has to be best in the universe. You don't get masal dosas on Mars. So anyway, I went to this hotel and there was a huge crowd, huge crowd in Malleshwaram in Bangalore. Everybody is ordering masal dosas. So when I, uh, when I wanted a masal dosa, that fellow came and told me, the waiter, that, Sir, it will take time, 20 minutes. Ah, no problem. No problem, I'll wait. Um, but you know that aroma, this, it wets your appetite, you feel very... In the meantime, get some idli vada, you know, just get idli vada. I had idli vada, then I had a little shira, little upma. And guess what? Sadly, by the time the masal dosa came, I didn't have space in my stomach to eat that masal dosa. In this hotel called Life, I feel that's what is happening. Innumerable people with their experiences say that the best thing to order here is God. Yeah, I want to order God. And God says, thoda time lagega. Shraddha saburi hai. Haan, tiga, tiga, time lo. In the meanwhile, I have some money, some position, some power. Ah, order karo. And we fill ourselves with that. Finally, when God comes, aray, jagai nahi hai. Order nahi hai, Bhagawan ka. Because Swami says that. Swami says, I am your servant. Dasasya Dasa, I am the servant of my devotee, I am waiting you to order me. We are not giving the order. We are not ready to wait for the order. We want instant. We fill up with idli vadas and sadly dosa doesn't have place. So therefore, that is what is meant by hungering for God. Don't fill your belly with idli and dosa, idli and vada. Don't. Swami gives the example of a baby, you know. The baby cries for the mother. The mother is cooking in the kitchen. The baby starts crying, what does the mother do? She'll come take a rattle and tiki 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 she'll shake it and give it to the baby. The baby will see in wonderment and then mother will go back and cook again. After some time, the baby realizes, hey, I've been fooled. Throws the rattle and starts crying again. She'll get some keychain, some teddy bear, coo 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 tiki 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 tiki. Oh, okay. Finally, when the hunger becomes so much, the baby starts bawling. You give anything, it doesn't care opening its mouth wide and screaming its lungs out. That time the mother doesn't bother whether the bendy is getting burnt or not. She just stops whatever she's doing, picks up the baby and takes it close to her heart. It's the same with God. It's the same with God. Let us not stop crying when he gives us little worldly gifts. Let us not be satisfied with rattles and keychains. He'll give it to us, throw it aside. Swami, I want you. I cried for you. I cried for that milk of divine kindness. That is what I want. I don't want all this. And God won't bother if something is burning there also. He'll come straight. But, as I said, we fill ourselves with so many desires. The desire for God is almost forgotten. In fact, in an interview to one of my classmates, Swami had said, I had asked him, have you gone for a wedding? Who eats food first in the wedding? So I mean, all those who have come from far, all the distant relatives and friends. You know, sometimes in the wedding, there are some people who don't even meet the bride and groom. They enter, go straight to the food, finish and pack off, you know. They, they don't know me, what is the use of going? Hello, haven't. So the ones whom you know the least are the ones who eat the first. So I mean, after that, who eats? 
So I mean, after that, the friends and family. And after that, what do you do? So I mean, after that, the close family, everybody will eat. Then, we finally end, bride and groom will eat. Bride and groom eat in the end. So if food still remains, what you will do? So I mean, food still remains, all the people, you know, who all workers and all in the hall, whoever helped, they'll all be fed. If food still remains, what you'll do? Swami, Swami will go out on the road and do Narayan Seva. And this is our concept of Narayan Seva. Ghar mein jo bat jata hai khane ke baad, wo de do, we'll do Seva here, we'll give, bai ko de denge. Swami says, Narayan Seva means what you cook first, you should offer to God. Anyway, that's another topic, but yeah, this boy said, Swami, we'll do Narayan Seva. After doing that, all the food remains, what you'll do? So what we'll do, Swami? We'll throw it, like this, some crow or some dog, we'll eat it. And Swami said, when it comes to your love, I'm like that crow. You go and offer your heart to everything in the world, get kicks, they'll eat and tear and rip and go and when everything is done, then also you don't turn to God. You are lost, depressed, you throw away. Like the crow, I come and peck at what remains and then I'll give you. Swami said. You see, when you offer a leaf full of food to any person, they just eat it up. When you offer it as naivedyam to God, what happens? It comes back to you as prasadam, you know. That is why I feel for festivals we could cook awesome food. Not because God is going to partake, because we have to eat it, right? I remember when they were doing Abhishekam during one Akhanda Hanuman Chalisa, the fellow said, hey, pour little more sugar syrup and do the Abhishekam. Because you know, otherwise the pankam won't be sweet enough. Why? Because we have to eat the pankam, no? But that's how it is. Anything we offer to God comes back to us. And yet we don't offer our lives to God. We don't. And Swami told that boy that if anybody offers their life to me, it becomes their right to demand from me. But then, as I said, that was when the physical form was there. 2013, another, another visit, another trip. This time, I got invited to West Indies. Now, how do I ask Swami? I was wondering, how do I ask Swami? And the way, you know, it was amazing. We call it coincidence. But the day the request to travel to West Indies came, the same day profuse vibhuti poured out of my photograph at home. And I felt thrilled. I said, thank you, Swami. So this, why I'm sharing this is because there's no one way in which Swami comes. Swami comes in many ways. But it is definite that He comes. Let's not turn to anything else. Let's not go for a second best option because there is no second best option. God is the best option. Anything else is terrible. I remember one instance, in 2010, 2010 or I think 2009, 2009, 2010, I got to know about the Nadi, Nadi readers who will tell you everything about your past, your future. They'll take a thumb impression, tell your charitram. They'll see your shadow and tell about your forefathers, everything I heard. I was also fascinated. I wanted to go to one Nadi reader. But you know, the Nadi readers are like dentists. Till you, till you become old, you don't know whether they messed up or not. Because you know, my, my mother's teeth, when she was 50, she went to get it set. And the dentist said, hey, your previous dentist did a horrible job. Now, how do you select a good dentist then? You have to get it done and wait for 50 years to see if he was good or not. The same thing with the Nadi reader. How do you know it was accurate or not? Nothing. Just receive his prediction, wait. After 30 years, you can look back and say, hey, that fellow was a fool or that fellow was brilliant. And there's no guarantee of success. But still, you know, I want to take my chance. People take chances with the dentist. I want to take a chance with the Nadi reader. And so I wrote a letter to Swami. I wrote a letter saying, Swami, you know everything, but the problem is you don't tell anything. The Nadi reader apparently tells everything. And there are, there are four things that I want to know. Point number one, point number two, point. So these four things I want to ask him, so I'm seeking your blessing. And when Swami came, he received the letter. I felt that's done, okay. So I called up my sister. She said she has an authentic, authentic Nadi reader. He's got a good success rate. 75% of his things have come true. Good, great. So I picked up this Nadi reader, fixed an appointment, 2000 rupees it is, but fine. 12th of May was my appointment. And this was in the month of March. And after this, 
started somewhat cold treatment from Swami. The Swami will come, he'll not look, he'll not smile. And in my heart, I'm telling, yeah, you went to Nadi reader, no? This is what, this is what it is. Swami has come here, you're going to Nadi. Okay. At the same time, there was one Bhagavata Saptaham going on in Parthi. In that Bhagavata Saptaham, he's speaking about the glory of Krishna, the Purnavatar Krishna. Krishna, no, Krishna. Like, you know, and when you listen, no, you, you get so, so full of devotion, you become like a realized soul itself. There's a term for it, it's called Purana Vairagya. There are temporary vairagyas, temporary detachments you get. One of them is Purana Vairagya. When you listen to some awesome story from the Purana, you feel, what is all this life? I don't want anything. That last till we have dinner that night, that's it. After that, we are back. Purana Vairagya, Smashana Vairagya. Go attend a funeral. You'll come back. And tell, hey, what? Boss is giving promotion, huh? Who wants promotion? What is this? <laughs> Finally, life ends like this. Life and that, that attitude ends with the day there. That's it. Next day we are back to, hey, what happened to the boss here? He's not. So these are all temporary vairagyas. Abhava vairagya. Abhava vairagya is uh, when you don't have something. It is a grapes are sour kind of philosophy. <laughs> who wants power here? Power who wants? I can't get, I don't have anything. So simply come and uh, who wants to be prime minister? Yeah, what is the use? Nothing. Nothing. Prime minister position doesn't get anything. If a prime minister tells that, it's great. You tell because you have no capacity to get that. And there's another called Udara Vairagya. You eat 20 gulab jamuns and then there are 10 hungry people and you pick up one gulab jamun, they come fighting for it. Don't. Why are you attached to this? Hmm? You fellow, you have hogged 20 over there and you are giving Vairagya over here. Hmm? This is what I used to feel. Some people you know, receive 15, 15, 20 interviews and tell, you don't worry. See, Swami is not just the physical form. Hey, you be quiet. Eh? He might be telling genuinely, but I used to feel what you know. You have got 20 interviews. I have not got any. You don't come and give me gyan about not having attachment to the form. But anyway, so these are all temporary vairagyas that uh, one gets. So, yeah, where was I? Yeah, so this Nadi, yes, coming back to the Nadi. So, so I had written this letter and Swami was not looking at me and I was very... So I had got that Purana Vairagya, listening to the Bhagavatam, I said, Oh God, what a mistake I did here. When that Supreme Lord Krishna is here, I am going to some Nadi reader paying 2000 rupees. Free Swami is giving. But I am ready to pay money and go get fleeced by somebody. So the next opportunity I got was a very uh, interesting manner. Swami did not actually call me. Swami called one of my colleagues and asked him about a project that he was working on. And somehow coincidentally it had happened that the previous days we had discussed this very same project and I told him, see if Swami asks what it is, don't tell like this. That is the series called Message of the Lord which is on the website, Radio Sai website. I told him, no, no, you should not tell like this, we should present it like this, we'll market it to Swami like this, all that I had told him. So when Swami asked him what project you're working on, he's not able to remember how I told it should be marketed. He told Swami, I'm working along with Arvind. Arvind, come here, he told. So I got a chance to go near Swami. So another, another three of us were with Swami and Swami listened to the whole thing. Swami will go on internet, it will go into every home Swami. Swami will go to every home. For devotees joy we are doing, Swami doesn't need this. Because you know, Swami would say, I don't want this. Swami did not want Radio Sai Studio itself. Then why you want all? No need. Those who have to receive, will, who have it, they'll come and receive. No Swami, we will feel happy talking about you. So please allow us to talk about you. Even that, you know, Swami never wanted any publicity. Doesn't want it at all. Okay, if you get joy doing publicity, do it. Otherwise, I don't want it. So that's how we presented to Swami. Swami, devotees will feel very happy, Swami. And Swami is weakness, our strength, devotees. Oh, devotees are happy, okay, do. So all. But all that Swami is telling to the other two. I am the one giving the info, but he is nodding to the other two. And he told both of them, take Namaskar. He didn't tell me to take Namaskar. I'm like, yeah, I could take it. It's freely available there, but you know, my ego is hurt. They have been told to take. It's as if like, if they take after being told, they'll get extra blessing and I won't get it. So I'm also looking at Swami, he's not telling me only. I said, Swami, sorry Swami. Swami said, for what? I knew what it was. Again, I didn't have the courage. I said, Swami, my sister told that Nadi fellow is very good Swami, that's why. You know, <laughs> anyway, she's not here, no, so put the blame on her. Then Swami said, ha, MMO chaptado. Means he'll tell something, whatever he wants, he'll tell. I said, yes, Swami, I heard this, I heard Bhagavatam and I realized that I was suffering. Swami asked, what are you suffering from? Now, I wanted to tell him that I am suffering from delusion. 
but i don't know the word for delusion in telugu so i cooked up a word i said swami i am not maya murkhatvam i told means you know i felt <laughs> foolishness murkhatvam because of maya you know i said swami maya murkhatvam so swami said take namaskar you know he felt <laughs> <laughs> so done nadi cancelled swami back to happiness in fact after that in the month of april swami had gone to delhi and uh, swami had gone to shimla and i got a chance to be with swami also definitely swami was not upset with me otherwise i couldn't have gone so all this happened and we were back in our project you know shooting uh, for this message of the lord series which we wanted to release for swami's 85th birthday and uh, as we are uh, shooting for that there was one episode i think episode 9 in which we are depicting the good samaritan the story biblical story where a person of a low caste comes on a donkey and helps some person and therefore it is said that a person uh, a good neighbor is one who has feelings of compassion and not a fellow of a high caste so i was supposed to be the good samaritan so i was dressed in some dirty robes and we had hired a donkey i was seated on the donkey here rode a donkey i have done it awesome it is you know and i was sitting on the donkey and we were riding and as the scene was going on suddenly my phone begins to ring you know it's a biblical time there were no cell phones so it ruins the shot so they cut it and i get on and i dig through the robes and because inside i'm wearing the pant i pulled out my cell phone it was one of my classmates calling me and i picked up the call he said uh, are you free are you busy i said see right now i'm sitting on a donkey and trying to save an injured man <laughs> he said no no swami told me to tell you something I said, what? I mean, I am in Puttaparthi. Swami is here. You are in Bangalore. He said, very urgent it is. I said, okay. So I took permission from the crew and I went and said, hey, what do you mean, Swami told you what? You got an interview or what? He said, no. Today morning I had a very strange dream. I am telling strange because in the dream, Swami is not speaking to me only. Swami is speaking only to you, and I didn't understand what it was. He told some fo- he told some disconnected things to me. I didn't understand what is the connection between that. and he told me you tell it to arvind he'll understand so i said uh, can you do one thing this is very important then uh, you call me after half an hour i'll be back in the studio after one hour you call me and tell me because when you tell me i'll note it down so that then i can make some sense out of it he said okay okay i'll call you in an hour so in our next half an hour the shoot was complete i reached back the studio and no before this friend could call my sister calls me from bangalore and she tells me Arvind, I'm missing you so much today. I said, "Wow, what happened? Wow, why are you missing me?" She says, "See, you're supposed to be today in Bangalore. You're not here." I said, "Why am I supposed to be in Bangalore?" She said, "Yeah, you cancelled. I know, but you remember today is May twelfth. You're supposed to come for the Nadi reading here, eleven o'clock appointment." I said, "Ah, yeah, 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 correct. Yeah." So I also had one heart-to-heart talk with my sister, and it was done. After my sister's talk, the friend again calls me, and can you believe it? the four unconnected things that swami spoke to me in his dream were the four things that i had written in the letter to swami 3 months back saying swami you know but you don't tell that's why i want to go to the nadi reader and swami said you wanted to go it from the nadi reader no in that same timing on the same day i will send it to you you don't have to go to bangalore no god can do it but he just does it in such a variety you know so that so that fellows like me get 10 experiences to share about that's what i was thinking you know that bhagavata saptaham goes on for one full week just imagine if krishna could kill the demons by just saying you die dead if krishna had done that to all the demons there would be no bhagavata saptaham only because the, on the first day the first sentence would be the demon came and krishna said die he died dito 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 over but variety one he tore the chest one he tore the beak one he broke into half one you know variety then you can have one week otherwise where will the speakers of future get their livelihood from <laughs> so that variety is for us to enjoy so that is why swami also comes to us in such myriad ways it's just that we are not awake to it we are not alert to it you know possibly i'll conclude with a very normal way in which swami comes to us i'm saying normal way because we often miss this and this happened with a very recent visit this time i got invited to the middle east as late as 2014 and when that happened there was some kind of a issue some yeah this problem that problem they have not agreed this so many things were there but 
I did not bother about that because never have I bothered about that because I feel if Swami wants me to go, nobody can stop me from going and if Swami doesn't want me to go, nobody can make me go. So I wanted to know what Swami wants. So again I prayed, no dream, no other's dream, no vibhuti, nothing. Nothing is happening now. How do I know? How do I know that I'm, should I go or not? In the meanwhile, they called and said, you're coming till Bahrain, now come to Dubai also. I said, no, wait, this Bahrain thing is only not confirmed. You don't fix up Dubai and all, you know. I don't know if I'm coming to Bahrain itself. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. Then one of my classmates who was there, he called me and said, you know, at least, uh, you know, I had to up upgrade and update my passport because it was a handwritten passport and you had to uh, upgrade it to a chip passport. So he said, at least you finish all that and be ready, you know. Because if Swami tells you to go, you should not then start your passport work. I said, okay. So while waiting for Swami's yes or no, I decided to go to the passport office in Hyderabad. My plan was to go on a Friday, get the job done, return back to Parthi on a Saturday, so that Monday onwards I can go back to office and I'll have to take only two days leave. Because you know, passport office is not open on Saturday and Sunday. Now I landed there, landed there on Friday. See the reason was in my passport also, you know, the photo of me was like such a kid that when I had gone to West Indies, they we were looking at me whether it is me or my kid, like that he was looking. Like that. So you only, huh? all that, you know, so, so I said, get it changed anyway. Now what to apply, I had applied it as change of appearance, because I thought my appearance, that is when I realized that, yeah, the, uh, it is foolishness because change of appearance means if my nose got cut or I started wearing a turban or my eye went off, then that is called change of appearance. They don't consider growth as change of appearance. So I again applied, ch saying change of address, because my original passport was for my Mumbai address, so I gave my Puttaparthi address, so change of address, and I went there. So I passed through the last final two stages. Before the last stage, I have to submit all documents. There that lady who was sitting, she said, so where's your marriage certificate? Oh, I had forgotten that in that 15 years time, I had actually got married, so I had not got my marriage certificate. I said, oh, I forgot. Oh, but you know what, I can tell my dad to scan and you know, send it by mail and I'll show you to you on my phone. No, 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 sir, I have to see it in person. Then I thought, now is the time to use Swami. So I said, uh, actually I'm from Puttaparthi. I thought that's it, now a smile will come on her face. She said, okay. I said, you know Puttaparthi? No. <laughs> Sitting in Hyderabad doesn't know Puttaparthi. See, this is fate. This is what happens. People, people come from Zaire and Congo to Puttaparthi and you don't know sitting in Hyderabad. Anyway, I said, you know Sati Sai Baba, right? No. You don't know Sati Sai Baba? No. Okay. Uh, see, it's eight hours journey from here. Do something, please. You know, I can't. I, can't, I left Swami. I thought I'll plead to her. She said, see, the maximum I can do is I'll put it at standby here for one more year. In the next year, anytime you come, you need not go through the initial stages. You can go from here. I said, okay, fair enough. Good. My, my, I thought maybe I'll just extend my visit and stay till Monday and in the meanwhile get them couriered and something I was thinking like that. Just as I was about to get up, she said, sir, sir, how did you get this? She is, I looked, it was the Singapore stamp. I said, yeah, I got it in Singapore. Now, how did you go to Singapore? By flight, I told you, you know, because that's how I had gone to Singapore. <laughs> I didn't go by ship and all that. So, no, 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 not that way, sir. Even this, this Trinidad. You went to Trinidad. How? I said, yeah, that was three, three, three flights. Then she says, no, sir, this is a minor passport. You can't travel, sir. It's an invalid passport. It expires the moment you turn 18. I said, you know, Sathya Sai Baba, he does these things. You know? <laughs> I still have got that passport with me. I traveled all my international visit so far on an invalid passport. And I was thinking I need Swami to tell you go or give vibhuti. Guess what? The very fact that I'm going is because he has willed it, otherwise I can't go. That's the miracle. The very fact that I'm standing and speaking, that's a miracle because the Lord willed it. The very fact that each one of us is breathing, that Swami's will. We think we are breathing? No. Because there are people holding their throats and choking, unable to breathe. When they are choking, how is it that we are breathing? It's a miracle. We don't recognize it because it's normal. It's normal. 
if we are able to see the lord in every moment of our life every moment of our life will be a miracle we just miss it and think that swami is not coming to us every moment he is waiting for us and these are not my words swami has himself said dear one i am waiting for you every moment when you got up in the morning with a frown on your face because it's a monday when you went to the bathroom with a frown because the hot hot water was not there because the power went off you know in bangalore there was a time when power cuts were so frequent one of my friends was saying that every night i have candle at dinner with my wife <laughs> not because of romance but because of kb karnataka electricity board so you see swami god is waiting for us every moment of our life we just don't realize we don't realize some miracles because they happen slowly you know i think i've got five more minutes i'll try to squeeze in one quick slog over because there was a time when i was in the school and my desire was to go and take photographs of swami as much as possible and there were multiple obstacles to this first obstacle being you needed to get a permission slip from the warden and the second obstacle being the warden at that time knew that i was quite indisciplined in some things so he would punish me by not giving me a slip that is the best way to punish right deprive something that they want till they learn the lesson so i had got so frustrated that i wrote a letter to swami and i said swami i want a miracle what is the miracle swami i should walk into the mandir with the camera nobody should stop me nobody should ask me for permission slip i should not require permission slip from anybody especially warden if you are ready to give that miracle take this letter swami and guess what swami came into that letter i was thrilled i was thrilled and the next day i got my camera i walked without any permission slip and i stopped royally at the gate by the sevadal <laughs> did sai ram sir permission <laughs> i have got permission i have got i wanted to tell him that i have got because not from said where is the slip and you know swami didn't give me slip he actually took my slip from that letter he took i didn't know how to tell it to him i said no sir i have been permitted I said sir you may be permitted but my duty is if you don't have slip i can't allow you i said no swami is going to come for darshan you want to send me back to the hostel no sir your camera you leave in the security office here and you go so that's what happened and after that you know throughout throughout my student life i had to take chits i had to take permission slip from the warden i just left it i said this is one among the several prayers god didn't grant this is a miracle that god didn't give me that's it no problem i am forgiving i am large hearted i leave him and really i am just expressing it most of us feel like this most of us feel we have done so much for swami and swami has hurt us no problem no problem i'll forgive i am large hearted this is how we feel about swami this is what i feel and so when i was thinking this now i'll fast forward to 2010 the 20th of november 3 days before this 85th birthday swami called me and he said prime minister is coming for convocation no yes that that year the chief guest was dr manmohan singh and several things swami said he told you go tell all the students to be dressed properly they should behave properly prime minister is coming all that he said in the end he said wear suit and tie and all and come with camera i said yes swami and that day you know <laughs> like vip pass it was you know i was going everywhere shooting photos in fact even into the interview room when swami went with the prime minister and that is when it struck me that this prime minister visit was possibly a highlight for me as as a photographer because for several years before that beat harshi mumbai delhi shimla i just realized that i was walking everywhere anywhere i want without a permission slip taking photographs of swami but guess what this fool didn't realize that swami had gifted a miracle because i felt it's natural i am from radio sai i am having camera natural it is natural how many times have i missed miracles in my life because i foolishly thought it is natural it is not natural you prayed and swami said i will give you the miracle at my own time at the correct time the time had not come when the time came i gave but you don't give me credit because you say it's normal it's normal i was introduced as a ace photographer i am not an ace photographer i am not i have just been elevated to a status of an ace photographer simply because swami gave me attention that's it 
I realized that as a photographer, I stand nowhere. But I asked a miracle and God gave it. Whatever we ask from God, He gives it at the right time. Not as you know, Ajit Popat sir is here, he would often tell that, I am reminded of that dialogue. God gives us not at, not at the last minute, but at the right minute. He knows the right time, He gives us at that time. But we are not ready to wait. We don't have patience. Swami, when I ask you something, give it tomorrow, else I will conclude that you didn't give me. And that is the reason why I miss many miracles in my life. Slow miracles, normal things that are happening. Nothing is normal in the universe. Everything is being planned and done by God. If we can realize that, I don't think we will ever get a doubt as to why God is not coming to me. Because God is with me, above me, below me, within me, every moment of my life, guiding me and guarding me more closely than the eyelids guard the eye. Thank you. Jai Sairam.